easier to go through there because in the beginning it would just try and over rotate on you and it wasn't going to be much fun for everyone just being in the wall so we tried to master that corner as you said uh, and a very last quick question because the cars are about to start the race some um, sixth position at brands that's your best result of the season can you better that this evening yeah this evening no i'm betting myself to the charlotte and zolder that's where i'm aiming for they're the ones that you've got ticked off are they they're the ones you're looking forward to yep Good luck for the rest of the evening, Brian. Thanks for joining us in commentary. The race gets underway, and it is Tobias Dallenhauer that leads the charge up towards turn number one. Bavo Fallon with a good start. He's going to slot himself into third place because Ulysse Delso should do enough to hang on to second. Everybody's safely onto the brakes. Gets tight a little bit further back. There's contact, and that looks as though it was Sebastian Bleaky Molen that got tagged into a spin. Uh, whether he managed to hang on to it, couldn't quite see. But everybody else, I think, largely safely through turn number one already though starting to open up a gap is Tobias Dauenhauer from Ulysse Del So uh, Marin Kramer's sitting there in third place and it's going to be Bavo Fallon, Simon Palat and Justin Kuntz that complete the top six as things currently stand as we look at uh, Simon Palat his uh, very distinctively liveried car there orange at the front fading to yellow and green at the tail end looking to see whether he can apply the pressure in the early stages to Bavo Fallon but for the moment clean start to the race and I can see right at the back of that long shot that Sebastian Bleaky Molen despite the half spin and dropping to 16th place managed to climb back up to 14th position um, one other driver has come as to join us in commentary and I'll bring him in straight away because he's a familiar name to uh, Euro NASCAR uh, but is nowadays concentrating his efforts in the Xfinity series Mayat Snyder joins us in commentary Mayat it's great to, to have you uh, alongside us this evening oh, thanks for having me guys great to be here, great to catch up with everybody. I know uh, things are probably a little bit different racing lines across the pond, um, but yeah, glad to catch yeah, I suppose at least now in America, albeit behind closed doors, uh, you're, you're racing. You know, we've, we've seen you have a couple of top tens in the Xfinity series so far, including a fifth a couple of races ago from 22nd on the grid at Bristol. That must have put a smile on your face. Yeah, absolutely. That, Bristol was a real fun one. Um, you know, it's always a good race when I can get into the car with the RCR guys and uh, have Tax Slayer on board. And so uh, that was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Bristol. It's uh, one of the places that I struggled with in a truck. So to go there and run really well in an expendy car uh, really, put a, really gave me some confidence and uh, it felt great to do that. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I think we probably should have had an even better run uh, this past weekend at uh, Atlanta. I probably should have finished top eight. Um, but we had a loose right rear wheel um, on the last pit stop. Mm. So that was yeah. today. But uh, we, we, we've been running really good in both cars, so I'm, I'm really happy with how we've been doing this year. We, we've seen you out predominantly in the number 21 uh, Chevy for Richard Childress racing, the Tax Slayer Chevy, as you were talking about. We've also seen you out, what, three runs out with uh, with RSS racing in the number 93 Chevy. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, kind of how I'm going to be um, running. Um, a lot of my races for a while now. Um, I, uh, yeah, I've, I've got to basically run a lot of the year and um, the 93 car I've only got um, officially right now on Martinsville and Phoenix and schedule for the RCR car again. So, uh, yeah, we're not quite full time yet, but um, I think we're working on it and we're, we may be getting close. So, uh, yeah, look for a special announcement Friday, I guess. The, the performances are there, the speeds are there. Are you out at Homestead next? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm at Homestead next, and um, it's uh, it's a really fun racetrack, you know, Progressive Bank mile and a half. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not our championship race this year, but uh, hopefully that decision can be reversed. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, Mike. It's great to have you uh, back in, looking in on your own NASCAR. And don't be a stranger. Um, do keep looking in on us from time to time. And it'd be great to see you back out on the grid because particularly, you know, uh, when we had Venray last year, you, you were second overall at Venray, your best result of the season. And it could have could have been a, a trip to victory lane for you. It was so close, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, I, I still, uh, I'm still a little bit hung up about that. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe maybe sometime I can come back and uh, re We'd have you back any time, any time at all. There we go, Maya Snyder. Thanks for joining us in commentary, Maya. All the best for the rest of the season in Xfinity. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> there we go, Maya Snyder. Always good to have a chat to uh, Maya Snyder. The racing continues in the final heat, uh, and we are now looking at uh, what is the fight between Justin Kuntz, who has just got himself up into fifth place, and Simon Palat, who has now dropped down into 
sixth position. Yuli Stelso, however, in second place, last time through, set the fastest lap of the race. He was into the 1 minute 29. 1 minute 29.95. I'm not sure how that compares to what you were doing around here, Andre. Um, but that, to me, looks as though that's a quick lap there from the former Euro NASCAR 2 champion. Oh, yes, right. I think this is a very nice seat, and I think today we saw three very, very good races. Not a lot of crashing. We have had other races in this series before. Um, everybody is very concentrated, very calm. Nobody is taking too much risks, and we're seeing great battles. Everybody is doing a very great job, and Tobias Dauenhauer at front, he's so fast, but Alistair Saw, he's uh, closing in, I think. He's Closing the gap to Tobias, and I think we will have a nice fight for the first position. Ah, it's around a 4 minutes and 30 seconds right now in this race, so it's going to be a very interesting second half of the race. But I want to say something about our guest, first of all, Brian Crowles, who was here. He talked about the setups. We are using a fixed setup in this series, and he's the coordinator of building those setups. So all of the drivers, they come together on practice servers and they discuss how the setup should be. It's not about having a very fast setup, it's about having a stable, drivable setup for everybody. So Brian Crowles is uh, the guy leading this group, being responsible for building one of those very complicated iRacing setups. And when you see all the stuff you can configure, it, it's crazy. And to my Snyder, I want to say, yes, he was second in Venray, but I think more impressed, uh, um, more interesting or more uh, exciting were his practicing laps on the half mile oval in the ring. Yeah, we, we should have thrown to a VT of that earlier, but I forgot. So we'll, we'll pick up on that one later on. We'll get Stefano to throw to it um, while we're waiting for some drivers to join us in the commentary. My, my fault, that one. Uh, Malin Kramer's, I had spotted that mistake. Malin Kramer's in third position under pressure from uh, Bavo Fallon. Uh, so both of these drivers will just want to make sure they don't trip over each other. Uh, Feed Vict Racing is uh, who we see uh, Marin Kramer's uh, driving for. Babo Fallon drives for PK Car Sport and sits there in fourth position. Justin Kuntz uh, in safely in fifth place now, ahead of Simon Palazzo, who's there in sixth place. Here's a quick replay of Fabio Spatafore. What does he do at the wheel of the Not Only Motorsport? Chevy, the answer is, just briefly touches the grass. The car swings from one side to the other, and then lots of arm twirling to try and keep it under control. Still loses the tail end of it. And as we've seen, and Andre has uh, alluded to it, it is a technical circuit and just that one small wheel put on the grass at the wrong time, particularly when you're applying the throttle or you get the transition from the loading of one car, one side of the car to the other as you go from a, a left-hander to a right-hander was enough just to catch out uh, Spataforde there. We're looking at Marin Kramers for Speedvic Racing, looking back at Bavo Fallon, who sits there in fourth position. The gap between these two is just under half a second at this stage but here we go look at the bottom right hand corner you can see the gap closing as Babo Fallon picks up the slipstream the gap that was nearly half a second is down to 0.3 by the time they get uh, towards the braking area for turn number one there are two minutes to go Tobias Dauenhauer is looking good here for potentially another heat win and here is the fight for the final automatic qualification place now remember Sebastian Bleaky Molem had a half spin uh, in the race earlier on well he has now worked his way through right up into contention with Philip Birisville who is a young kart racer from Hockenheim who makes a mistake and is all over the grass at turn number one so from an automatic qualification place that small mistake out breaking himself up towards turn number one has now al allowed Sebastian Bleaky Molen to go through into the final automatic qualification place. Bittersville is down into 11th position and is now starting to come under pressure from Santu Volksadoria, who is not that far behind him at the wheel of the number 48 car. So time ticking away. Philip Bittersville, I don't think uh, Andre is going to have enough time to, to catch up from that mistake that he made. Uh, I don't think so. I think he did another mistake. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It were two mistakes and now the time is running up. So I think he has to fight his way through the last chance qualifier. Everybody has got the chance to get into the main race, but you have to be in the top six. I think this will be one of those thrilling and a little bit chaotic races we've seen in the past in this series. But Philip Beres will. We see he's fast. He's able to be in the top ten, but he has to get rid of those small mistakes then he could be one of those drivers being in the main race from the very first second 
Simon Palat has caught back up with Justin Kuntz and has just tried to outbreak himself up at turn number one all over the grass, which means that Justin Kuntz will be able to go back through into fifth position. So that was all rather close. But Simon Palat now has put himself under pressure from three times former runner-up in the Euro NASCAR Pro Series, Fred Gabion, who sits behind. But Fred Gabion is also coming under pressure from the number 23 car in the hands of the Finnish driver who won the Challenger Trophy in uh, the Euro NASCAR last year, that being uh, Henry Tuamala. So this is a great little fight for fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth position. Henry Tuamala at the back of that little pack, moving over to DF1 racing for this year. He has got Fred Gabion directly ahead of him at the wheel of the Toyota Camry, but there's nothing at the moment that the Finn can do to try and squeeze his way through. So the 31-year-old just hits, sits behind Fred Gabion whilst onto the final lap of the race goes Tobias Dauenhauer, who is still under pressure from Ulysse Del So, but on the charge for the line with 0.6 of a second between them, it does look as though Tobias Dauenhauer is on course for his second heat win of the season. And that's two on the bounce now for uh, Tobias Dauenhauer because he claimed the heat two win at Zandvoort last time out and now takes the checkered flag to win heat number three here at uh, Indianapolis on the road course. Ulysse Del So in second place. Maran Kramers comes through to finish in third, head of Bravo Fallon in fourth place. Justin Coots just ahead of Simon Palat for fifth and sixth position as they head over the start finish line. And uh, then we will see Fred Gabion, Henry Tuamala, Stefano Gustavalle for Cal Racing is about to head over the start finish line. He's a, a team member on the number 54 car. And Philip Beresvel is, I think, just about going to hang on to the position for automatic qualification. He did manage to get himself back ahead of Sebastian Bleaky Molen. We didn't think that would happen, but something must have happened on the final lap to Sebastian Bleaky Molen because it's Beresvel that goes through automatically into the final race and uh, Sebastian Bleaky Molden will have to sort of hit uh, uh, restart really won't he because he will sort of automatically then uh, head towards the next race will be coming up so very little respite for him he'll be heading through into the last chance qualification so Tobias Dauenhauer was another driver that you picked out at the beginning of uh, the evening the young 22 year old German who is going to be racing in Euro NASCAR 2 uh, for Hendrix Motorsport in 2020. Came through as part of that all-important recruitment program that we had.